Hey there guys, uh, this is just a, you know, updated release uh, video for my PMX converter. It just uh, converts uh, XNA LoRa models so that they work with uh, Miku Miku Dance. Uh, and I've added a graphical user interface this time. Uh, so I hope that um, that kind of opens it up to more people. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, you tell me, you guys uh, have to give me some feedback on that. Uh, it was my first graphical interface I've done actually in C++. So I was pretty stoked about it. Anyway, we're going to extract this. Uh, we got our uh, folder here. And uh, your release might look a little different than mine. I got ahead of myself and I didn't go ahead and refine the package. But I'm pretty certain I'm going to delete this thing and then change the expo in here. So that probably will change. Uh, this is the application. Again, uh, this is the new icon, I think. Uh, I'm not a very good artist, but I did want to have a different icon to distinguish the uh, old one from the new one. So that's the new icon. Uh, double click on that, and the difference is on the old version, you would double click and it would just go right to the open dialog where you would find your file and then you would just convert it right there. I thought that was very minimalistic uh, and, you know, you know, good to get things quickly converted. Uh, but also it's subtracted from the ability to you or the user to look at the options that were available. Uh, so I thought putting a GUI would be probably best. Anyway, we can select our um, model and then you just say convert and you're done. Okay, it just tells you where the file is saved. Uh, really, what it does is wherever your input is, it just adds the extension PMX to it, and then it saves it to the exact same spot the input is. So our input was, <clears throat> I think it's over here in samples, and then there, there it is. There is our file. All right, um, we have toggles now. Uh, the toggle state, basically the whole state of the application, uh, will be retained when you close it. It'll be saved the settings I and I, so you can just pop back open and keep your settings, which is, I don't know, kind of cool. Um, and I'll just kind of go over what some of them do. All right, so we have the uh, bone renamer. What this does is it will find a bone name. It will then replace it with this other bone name. Okay, so what this does is we have two standards, right? So we have the XNA Laura standard, which is naming the bones in like English names. Then we have the Japanese standard, which names all the bones in Japanese names. So this will help to kind of bridge that gap, okay? Uh, to get the uh, XPS models somewhat standard, uh, we'll at least try to start to get them in a standard uh, naming convention. Uh, so you don't have to use this, you just, you can toggle it off, okay? Uh, but if you want to do that, you can toggle it on. Uh, this is the table, you can add to it, delete, delete from it, whatever you want to do, okay? Uh, this one here, it's a, uh, I don't know, uh, it, what it does is it launches the PMX editor. <clears throat> I'm thinking about maybe, I don't know, removing it or something, but, because uh, it's just for, for me, really, and I think it, it might be the source of some of the um, false antivirus scanners going off on this thing. Uh, I know some people on the last version reported that their antivirus identified this as a virus. It's not a virus. It's a false positive, but um, what it is, it's identifying some routine in my application. And what this thing does is it actually launches the PMX editor. And uh, let's say the PMX editor was a virus, then it would be launching a virus, right? Uh, so I can kind of understand why an antivirus would identify this as suspicious. But anyway, what this does is with this uh, toggled on, you would set the, um, you know, basically path of your PMX editor. And then when you do your conversion, it would just throw it in the PMX editor, which is great for me when I'm doing testing, because I need to see, you know, is the model okay, or, is, you know, is it any, you know, this thing that I've done to it, is it, you know, showing up, uh, so I use, you know, that feature to test my models with, so, anyway, that's all it does, it just uh, opens up the editor and opens your model in it, so, that does. Um, you have a scale factor, so one, you know, it's just one to one, uh, two would make your model twice as big, 0 0.5 would make it half as big, stuff like that. Pretty basic stuff. Um, these things, you probably no one's ever going to use, but remove unused bones. Uh, what that does is it takes the, the bones that are not being used and it just deletes them. Because uh, in some cases, some of the XPS models had thousands of bones, which is obviously some mistake. Somebody didn't know what they were doing and they just accumulated too many bones. Typically, your model should have about, you know, maybe 20 to 100 bones at max. Uh, so somebody really didn't know what they were doing if they have thousands of bones. But it seems to be a persistent problem with XPS that some 
models have thousands of bones. So this thing here, remove unused bones, is supposed to help reduce that problem by deleting them. Uh, well, bones that aren't being used by that. <clears throat> what I mean by that. But anyway, uh, I would probably not use that unless you have that problem because it could be deleting bones that you don't want it to on any other model, okay? Um, there is another feature I wanted to add, but I didn't get it done. I don't know if I will get it done, but it's a, an optimization feature which will reduce the file size by welding vertices. The other one is another optimization thing. It basically deletes vertex weights that are too small or under a threshold. Um, so again, it reduces file size. But by doing so, it actually affects the quality of how your models bend. So I would not use this. Just keep it toggled off. Uh, hide meshes. Um, basically, there's some items in an XPS file which are called accessories. So what I was doing was I was setting the transparency to zero. So those appeared invisible or hidden. Uh, but that actually caused some like confusion on uh, the last version. So actually what I'm going to probably do is just disable this and hide that button or just delete it. Because uh, people are just going to get confused with it again. Because <laughs> what I found out is actually if the texture is screwed up, the, the, the mesh will show up invisible. So then people would think it's the option that I have set up in the application. Then they get like confused and upset that the thing's not working. So, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I might just remove that, so just ignore that for now. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's some things here that uh, I wanted to have more fleshed out, like I wanted to maybe save it to FBX, but the FBX format is just a pain in the ass. I got it working, but I couldn't get the skeleton data working, so yeah, that sucked. Uh, inputs, uh, just takes like uh, normal inputs, but um, I was dabbling a little bit with uh, SMD, because some people were asking about uh, Source Filmmaker, but uh, it works, but I mean, there's a lot of more stuff to Source Filmmaker, like flexes, and so uh, that's, a, that's a complicated matter, so <clears throat> we'll get into that. Uh, other than that, there's a Discord here. Click on this. It's going to bring it to the redirect, so you can join the Discord, uh, our little community there. Uh, everybody is very enthusiastic and helpful about uh, everything related with uh, Miku Miku Dance. Uh, shout out to the server administrator. Uh, she goes by... Junko Yumishima, I know everybody calls himself that, it's like a trend, but anyway, she goes on there, Junko, she's a bit of sweetheart, she's been helping me with the uh, the beta testing, uh, things work on my side, things work on her, her side, uh, so I think, I think it's stable for release, that's why I'm releasing it, uh, but if you have any issues, uh, please uh, contact me on my uh, DeviantArt, uh, leave me a note on there, if you're having a problem with the application, explain that. If you're having a problem with the model, link me the model so I can look at the model directly, uh, get that resolved. Uh, I'll try to get back to people as fast as I can. All right, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, real quickly before I go, I'm just gonna recap about the previous functionality still being present. Uh, you know, in case people thought, oh, hey, you know, this has changed so much. I can't do this stuff I did before. Uh, yeah, you can still do drag and drop, so I'll just show you drag and drop still works, okay, no problem. Uh, if you're a person that likes using command line, it still works by command line. Uh, so I'll just show you like how to do a quick batch script, in case you're oh, crazy and want to convert like a million models or something. Uh, so we'll just name this text file to .bat. <coughs> uh, we're going to do a, a little simple script in here, so we're going to go for uh, variable i in... Um, uh, in our folder, anything that ends with .xps, we're going to do. Um, and then our application is just relative to our bat file, so we don't have to put the full path, but it's just pmx uh, convert .exe, and then our files will have a full path, so I'm going to double quote them, okay, just to make sure that there's no problems. Uh, we're just going to put the variable in there. All right, that's it. Very simple. Uh, this bat program will go through each one of those files and just convert them one after another. So if, you know, that's something you want to get into, it's functionality is there. Okay, guys, that's it. Um, I'm eager to get any feedback from you guys. Um, this is my first time doing a GUI. Uh, I hope you guys like it. And I wish you guys uh, happy converting on your porting ventures, okay? All right, take care, guys. Thanks for watching.